Well, I come from a, a First Nation that 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 was significantly impacted, not just by colonization, but by mega hydro development. You know, a lot of our traditional lands are now these mega reservoirs, and a lot of our ancestors are underneath water, so that Minnesotans can buy cheap electricity from Manitoba. And um, you know, for 20 years, I've been fighting against the fossil fuel sector in defense of indigenous communities whose lands have been disproportionately targeted for fossil fuel development including all these pipelines people might have seen in the news, you know, and all these huge protests from the White House to Canada's Parliament to the European Union, you know, all across the planet. And, um, you know, I, I, like everybody else, have been home for 19 months. And, you know, there's been a lot of silver linings to that. I think I've spent more time with my sons than I have in their entire lives in the last two years. Wow, and, yeah. Uh, well, because I'm on the road, like, three, four weeks a month, like, you know, like scrapping with evil people and the governments that they manipulate. And, um, you know, so I think the thing I'm bitching about is like the global triple threat, you know, this, this COVID pandemic, um, economic recession on international scale that, you know, humanity has never seen mm -hmm. and the existential threat of the climate emergency, you know, and all the opportunity, like, you know, I'm one of those guys that always looks at the glass half full. And, you know, we have won all the fights, the moral arguments, the scientific arguments, the economic arguments, you know, 12 to one jobs from the renewable sector to the fossil fuel sector right now. And these are jobs that allow people not to have to fly to North Dakota or to the tar sands in Alberta or, you know, to some offshore platform in the Arctic or whatever. It's actually be home and build infrastructure and community. Right. Um, you know, and, 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 and they're well-paying jobs, you know, they're highly sophisticated you know, well-paying jobs that allow tradespeople and, you know, and everybody else involved in this blossoming economy, this blossoming new future, you know. And I think the main thing I'm bitching about is that, you know, when people look at the global triple threat, they get frozen and they don't realize that the threat to the existential, you know, threat of climate change is, you know, localizing power in the interest of globalizing justice. Mm -hmm. And our last big fight, you know, we've, we've seen Exxon Mobil turn into a junk bond. And our last big fight is the political will of the decision makers, whether it's in the U.S. Congress and Senate or here in Canada at the Parliament or wherever else decision makers are in G8 economies around the planet. There's so much opportunity to create hundreds of thousands, if not millions and millions of jobs and to radically transform our relationship to the sacredness of Mother Earth and to each other as communities. But, yeah. um, you know, it, it just sometimes I get a little beat up and burnt out. And, um, you know, that cancer in me kind of makes me want to hide at home and, you know, just be in my shell. But, you know, we all got to hit the streets and get out there on the land and, you know, do something about this to move these decision makers into action. Because that's the fun. You know, we're in that final scrap. I mean, these oil companies are still dangerous, but we beat them. Yeah, um, it's possible. Now, now it's the governments that we got to focus on. So that's that's my main thing, you know, because mm. I want my sons to have the same ability to pick berries and catch fish and go hunting with their grandparents and all the things that, you know, happen in Cree culture, you know, mm. that's all under threat right now, just like every other culture on the planet dealing with this global triple threat. We don't have to look at it like that. This is an opportunity to build, to organize across social movement sectors and race, class, culture and gender and to come together yeah. in a beautiful way. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that is huge. That's probably one of the most profound what are you bitching abouts we've had ever. <laughs> next, to, um, next to mine, I think. You know, I mean, obviously next guys. to Babs and like Mr. Holland's Opus being a big letdown. I think that was the <laughs> but but I'm I really want to talk more about that, especially um the ways that people get frozen in in the enormity of this task. What's going on, Fran Tifa? If you haven't already subscribe to this channel right now hit that button and also you can become a patron and support the show every single week get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise patreon.com slash bituation room do it